I would have never expected forging to have taken over my life as much as it did this year. I have a lot of great moments that I want to share with you guys. So I hope you enjoy these stories as much as I enjoyed experiencing them with uh, my husband and friends. So here we have in this video, my top five mushroom moments of 2019. Number one. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is all about morels. Now, with Daniel and I learning about mushrooms, um, we live on Vancouver Island and morels, they actually grow really well after any sort of burns or disturbance in the soil, forest fires um, in particular. And so um, Daniel and I, when we would go out fishing, the only burns that we were, had access to was uh, after forests had been clear cutted and then you have all the logs piled up in, uh, in preparation for burning. And so once the logs were burned, in the springtime when morels pop, uh, usually April, May, and sometimes in June, depending on the weather, we would go up these clear cuts forever, um, scouring and looking for morels in, in these burn piles. And I was always so grateful and excited when we'd find one or two, or you'd get a cluster of three. And uh, I was just happy with that success that we had. But in 2019, there was a lot more fires in British Columbia. And so Daniel and I, instead of checking out the little burns, we moved to the bigger bigger burns around the, the province. And I remember going to this one spot with my girlfriend, Allison, and um, we found like, three tiny morels. And I mean like they were smaller than my, my like half of my pinky. And I thought, oh, like these things are just so elusive and they're so impossible to find that I'll never have success at them. Allison actually had gone back up with uh, one of our other friends and they did some hunting. And I remember her sending me these pictures and they had like probably five pounds or so. And I had never seen that many morels before. I want to find that many because the most I'd ever really found was like maybe like a dozen or so. So I remember forcing Daniel to go back and like we have to make our way to find these things. Like if they're if she's finding five pounds, that's what I want. I said to him when he was out there, I said, you got to go and scout so I can join you on that weekend and we can have um, that much success too. So before going out from where else, Daniel has an app called My Trails and what he did was he targeted the burns that he wanted to go to, and then he literally scouted up and down, pinning patches of morels that he had found. And so I still remember that day, I think when I uh, got home on the Friday, Allison and I were so excited that we wanted to uh, leave at like two in the morning and we'd start picking with headlamps. And the boys weren't okay with that, so we got up at oh, probably like 5.30 or so. And I remember Daniel walking up this gravel road to where the burns were. And he said, okay, hey, Kitty, you're gonna need your baskets. And I, I pulled up my mushroom baskets and he's like, I'm gonna show you where all the, the pins are. And he's like, you won't believe how many there are. And so we tour off the gravel road and up through the, the burn. And I just remember seeing like nothing and nothing. And I looking and I'm, I'm starting to panic cause I don't see any. And then I remember seeing one. And then I saw another and I was happy with two. And then I saw five and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've already got seven. And this is like, like that. And then Daniel's like, Kitty, there's more. And I remember pulling leaves back and counting and I'd, there'd be like 20. And then in some patches, I'm like holding my hand over, there's like 30. And they were, they were, it was just littered the whole place. And in no time, our basket started filling up. That's one of the best moments of my life. I'll just never forget seeing the mounds. And then I remember doing this for like every weekend for all of April, all of May. Number two. One of the other things that happened uh, later in the season during the Grays, uh, Daniel actually had gone out with me and we lost his hunting knife. And he was so bummed because he had it for so long. And so the next weekend we went out, we actually found it. But something that we also found that day that was even cooler in my opinion was these guys. So we're walking, imagine us walking along in this forest dead quiet, you can't hear anything. And suddenly you hear this scream, Kitty, Kitty, look what I found! What I'm thinking right away 
is that he's found this massive patch. And so I'm like hobbling over to see where he's at because he's, I remember he was up on this hill and I look over, I'm trying to find him in this, this burn. And I finally make eye contact with him. He didn't find mushrooms, but he's holding these two beauties above his head like this. While I've been fishing or mushroom picking, I always have my eyes open for sheds. I had never seen anything like this before. And the coolest part is with this, this set is that the antlers of this black tail were lying perfectly side by side like this. Can we see that? So the antlers, yeah, they stick out this way. And yeah, the way Daniel had found them was like that. And so what he thought was that the deer had been lying down and maybe they had fallen off during the night. Um, now, I've had people ask if they fall off at the exact same time. I've never seen it at the exact same time, but I have seen it on videos on the internet where one falls and then the other one falls off right after it. And it's just neat because these, these things actually survived the burn. You can see where, where they were lying on the ground. So that's this part here was touching the ground when the fire was going through, when the ground was getting hot. It's cool that, to know that these actually make it through. Three. I'm actually so obsessed with mushroom hunting that, you know, for those who know me, I had I had glasses, and I was so sick of wearing glasses with fishing and mushroom hunting because mushrooms, for the most part, they come out after rains or when it's raining. Uh, we do a lot of our picking, and so with wearing my glasses, it'd be so annoying because they'd fog up, they'd fall off my face when I'm getting to the ground. I lose, I would lose them multiple times or be having to retrace my steps to look for them. So this summer I decided to get LASIK eye surgery and um, I remember when I was going into the doctors and I hate, I hate hospitals. I don't like, like I don't even know how I came to do it. But I remember just before I went um, in for surgery, I asked the, the doctor and I said, hey, how fast is recovery time? Because there's mushrooms around, chanterelles, and I need to find them. And I remember the doctor telling me, oh, Kitty, you can even go outside the next day. He's like, it's actually good for you to get some fresh air. He said, just make sure that you have your sunglasses on. But yeah, you can totally go picking um, with your like eye protection on so that you're not getting hit in the face with branches or like dust. And so I remember waking up the next day with my big old LASIK sunglasses driving down to the forest where we had uh, been successful for the golden chanterelles. And before going out and picking, I was like, I had to take my drops every hour and I was lying down on the ground and Daniel's like, you know, give me the drops. And then I'd go out hunting. And I, I mean, like just, it's been so helpful for me because trying to see mushrooms from a distance when your eyes were poor was so frustrating. So now I'm a much more efficient mushroom hunter because of my LASIK. And I did, I, I was able to pick right after. So if any of you mushroom hunters have poor eyes, it's something to think about. Four, at this point for 2019, Daniel and I have been picking for a few years. And it was, wasn't until really last year where we became like serious mushroom pickers. And what I mean by serious is where we'd put steelhead and coho to the back burner and we'd put mushrooms first. With the one mushroom that we really wanted to get better at picking was the Matsutakis. And we had had some success in 2018 um, on the mainland searching for them, but the island we could never really figure out. Uh, every time we thought that the conditions looked really good in the forest, I mean, we were looking for, you had your uh, mix of hemlock, pines, and uh, Douglas fir, and we'd we'd find that perfect slope where uh, it was quick draining soil and we think oh this there's has to be pines here there's salal there's no ferns we've got this and every time we looked we wouldn't find anything and then when we least expect it we'd come across pines and i mean it'd be like a flat ground tons of moss you'd have a little bit of ferns there'd be no pines and you'd like pine trees and you'd find them and so this year we set out our goals to really figure out where they were and when they'd pop. And one of the tools that we actually used to help find the Matsutake or pine mushrooms 
was using the help of deer. So uh, Daniel and I on the weekends, especially as the season got later, um, it's much easier to find them because we call them flags. So the mushrooms have popped, um, they're quite large and obvious. And then what we'd do is we'd go up to these spots and we'd pin them on our GPS to have for next year. Deer I'd get so mad at in the past because last year, 2018, we always wanted to find fresh ones. So it'd be really frustrating when you'd find all these pines that were ripped up first by the deer. <laughs> Yeah, the deer are our friends, but they're also our enemies. Aren't they? Yeah. But this year we actually changed our mindset and any time that we found all these pines ripped up because the deer love to eat them and they, they, they usually, well, they are, their smell is so much better than ours. They know where they're at. Um, instead of being upset at the deer for beating us, what we did was we used that to our advantage and we'd actually pin where the deer had dug them up. And usually uh, in our experience this year, we'd find still a couple, couple left over that we could keep that the deer didn't find that were just slower growing. So there was one day that we found a few um, that was, there were flags that were ripped up and like, I mean, just shredded. But there was this one day when we were, um, we were going out to look for pines that we found I, I want to call it like a, a Matsutake massacre. Like it was something that I'd never seen before. We had been scaling this ridge numerous times in the year, waiting for them to pop because Daniel was so convinced that they would show up. And I remember going up, 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 and then making lines back and forth and fo just following where we thought looked good. And I remember at the end of the day, I came across back to Daniel to meet up with him and I just saw white, everywhere i mean like and these were big flags like each mushroom was a few pounds at least and it was cool because the way they were growing was almost like a, a fairy ring or like a circle around these this group of trees and you could see where the deer or i don't, I don't think it was people it looked more like animals had ripped up these matsutake mushrooms and just pulled them and half chewed half flung and like i had never seen anything like it it I don't even know how many pounds were there. It's just mushroom, 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 all the way around. And so that was one of the coolest things. So using deer as our friends, like they're kind of our foes, but they're our friends because now next year we have that pin. So we just have to go maybe a little bit earlier because since they were so big, it means that they, yeah, we were a little bit too late. But next year, number five, the last best kind of moment for us was just seeing how much we've grown since we first started. I think it was in 2016. Um, we did, we have spent a lot of time setting aside weekends for exploring new areas. And we're, we're, we're actually really lucky because we found a lot of the places that we've liked the most because of fishing. We're bush crashing through forests to get to the rivers for steelhead. So we already had a lot of areas that we knew we liked. But this year we did, we spent a lot of time just exploring, finding forests that we would never go back to again, forests that were just a complete waste. Um, we found there were certain patches that flushed at the exact same time as other years. We found, um, we found places that we went to maybe a little bit too early. And so now instead of going and looking there in September, we don't need to go there till mid-October. So we can just focus on other things. Like, yeah, we just really kind of perfected I would say our our successes weren't as good as 2018. 2018 was a lot of luck, I feel, but in 2019 we just found a lot of places that we wouldn't go to, so we'll have more time to explore next year. All right, so there you have it. Those are my top moments of 2019 and this girl's mushroom hunting season. If you have any stories or questions, please leave them in the comments because I would love to read your stories I would try to answer your questions. Remember, I'm still new at this. I'm just someone who's really enthusiastic about it. Please subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos, as well as my Instagram. Look up Kitty Canhoffin, and you can follow me there as well. So everyone, thank you so much for your support. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.